Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager. And this week we're going to look at how to manage Mac OS devices using profiles. Again, this is part of a series that we're doing on Mojave Server. And so if you're wondering how we got to this point, you may want to go back and look at some of the previous screencasts uh, to look at how we set up the server and how we got to the place where we're using Profile Manager. Uh, but if you're here to see how to manage Mac OS devices, then this is what we'll be talking about in this screencast. So here we are on an actual Mac OS device. You can see I've got my Mac Mini here, and I'm on the Settings tab. And so let's just go ahead and go in and edit the profile, because the profile information is right here. And let's just see what we can control uh, through a profile on my Mac Mini server. So if I click on Edit here, you can see that uh, now I've got my Settings payload here. Again, a payload is just the uh, configuration profile that has all the information that's going to be pushed to a device and be changed. Uh, again, as I like to show uh, in uh, other screencasts, that when you're here on the general area, if you want that to be automatic push, then you would leave that there and it will automatically take care of it itself. If you want to have a manual download, you would then just uh, click this box here and, per and your users would have to go to your My Devices site to download the profile and have it installed. So let's go ahead and come all the way down here to the Mac OS uh, specific information. Here it is right here. And let's look at what we can configure. Uh, so the first thing we have here is identification. If I just click on configure, you can see I can set a user display name, email address, the actual username and password right in here and have all of that set up uh, for a user and have that pushed to the Mac. For restrictions, you'll see here that I can restrict all kinds of things. So here are all the different things in system preferences. And all I need to do is uncheck the things that I don't want somebody to have. If I just say restrict items in system preferences, you see this opens up. I can go select all or select none. Uh, I can disable uh, selected items or enable selected items. Just depends on what I want the check marks to represent. But I can turn off things that I don't want users to have access to, and then they just disappear from system preferences so they can't uh, use them or make any changes to them. Again, very handy if you want to keep, let's say, your security settings the way that you want them or energy saver settings. Uh, you just come in here and click the boxes uh, to uh, either enable or disable, and they're done. I can do the same thing with apps. So I can come in here and choose which apps are allowed uh, to be used. And I can choose apps that are allowed, uh, folders that are allowed, and ones that are disallowed uh, as well. And then if I have any single sign-on apps, I can put those in here too if there's just uh, you know one app that I'm going to be using for the entire machine. I can do the same thing with widgets. I can allow uh, widgets to run and then choose which ones if I want that to say only these are the ones that are allowed to run. Uh, the same with media. I can choose what type of media can be used, whether they can use the internal disks or not, or use any external disks or disk images. So I could literally shut all of that off so that they can't use that, or the DVDs or CD-ROM drives. Uh, any of that uh, information I can go in here and set. And the same with sharing, uh, where they can share things to. If there are certain services, like I don't want them using Twitter on the job, Job. I just disable that and now Twitter won't show up in the share area uh, anywhere on my Mac OS device. And then with functionality, I can lock the desktop picture if I don't want people you know, changing that. Maybe I want it to be my corporate one or the default one. I can lock that. Uh, and then I can choose whether they can allow the camera, they can use Apple Music or not. You can just see all of the different things that I can allow or disallow uh, related to things like iCloud and documents and screen recording and all of that. Now, if I go to security and privacy here, I can configure those settings uh, here. I can choose whether I should, I can allow the user to change their password. Uh, I can configure gatekeeper settings to say uh, I only want to allow apps from, let's say, the Mac App Store uh, or identified developers as opposed to anywhere so the user can't override that and download their own stuff onto my machine. Uh, and I can say don't allow the user to override the gatekeeper settings so that they can't change that and override it themselves. Uh, the other thing I can do is File Vault. I can require File Vault, um, uh, File Vault, and set up all the information in here for that. Uh, and I can also do the same thing with the firewall. I can manage the firewall, enable, disable, uh, block all incoming connections. Uh, I can enable stealth mode. I can set all of those things. And then the same with privacy, whether I want to send diagnostic uh, reports to Apple or not. I can turn that on or off here. If I've got an Active Directory, I can set that certificate information in here. So if I'm using Windows, uh, a Windows Active Directory along with my Mac, uh, I can set that up here. Uh, I can do the same thing here for the directory itself. I can set up 
whether it's an open directory or active directory, and put my server's host name and username and password information in there too. I can also control what's on the login window. So I can choose to have a banner message on there uh, if I want that, and then what I want to show on the login prompt. Uh, I've also got other op uh, options over here where I can show the password. I can log out users after a certain period of time. Uh, enable fast user switching from the login window uh, if I want. And then I have uh, things here for the setup assistant. If it's a new machine, I can choose uh, what I want to allow and not allow. Like maybe I don't want them to use Siri, so I can just turn that off right here. And then in terms of access, uh, I can allow the users and groups uh, access the ones that can log in on this particular computer. I can deny other ones from doing that. And then I can choose specifics on uh, who I allow on that login window. And then I can also run any scripts that I want to. Maybe as soon as you log in, I want it to run a particular script in the background. I can set that up, upload that script, and it will automatically run when you log in. Uh, that's in the login window. In terms of login, login items, uh, these are items that I want to automatically start when I log in. So I can put apps that will launch, uh, different items or folders that will open. So I could actually have uh, a certain folder open up automatically when you log in on your machine. Uh, so that makes it easier to find whatever file that you're looking for. Uh, I can do authenticated network mounts. So if I want certain drives to mount or network drives to mount, uh, and then there's other network mounts here as well. So again, kind of nice that I can set up and, can, and log in automatically, let's say, to network drives as soon as you log into your machine. Uh, there is mobility on here, and that's if I've got portable home directories. This was a bigger deal in the past if I'm running uh, an older server an older version of that server, I can set that information up in here. I'm not going to go into detail on it because it's no longer available on Apple servers, but if you really want to know how to set that up, you can look at a previous screencast I've done uh, for older versions of server, uh, and you'll see uh, it'll show up how mobile accounts work. Uh, I can configure the dock. Uh, I can choose the dock size, magnification, position, uh, what apps are in the dock, uh, what dock items are there. Uh, so it's pretty neat. I can add folders from these different locations. I've also got software update settings I can do. And so if I've got a particular software update server that I want to connect to, I can do that right here as well. Uh, again, printers. I can set up my printers here. And so there's my printer list. And add a printer. I can set the default printer and uh, then choose uh, all the different settings for it. You can see all of the things we can do here are pretty amazing. Uh, I can configure uh, the energy saver settings, so how my computer sleeps, uh, the uh, portable information, if I've got a laptop for battery and the power adapter, what I want it to do uh, energy-wise, and then any schedule of startup and shutdown or sleep uh, for my machine. Uh, I can configure parental controls from here, which is nice. So any, uh, any uh, content filtering that I want in here or any time limits uh, that I want for my kids, I can put that in here, push the profile, and it'll automatically go on their Mac. Uh, time machine can be configured from here. Uh, so again, where the backup server is, what volumes and things I want to back up. I can even set a backup uh, size limit so it's not taking up too much of my drive. And then any paths to skip. Maybe there's files I don't want to have backed up uh, that I really don't need. I can go ahead and exclude those right here. Uh, the other thing I can do is configure the finder. Uh, I can choose uh, what items to display on the desktop. I've got other commands uh, that I can uh, show or not show. Maybe I don't want them to connect to another server so I can just turn this off. Um, accessibility is in here as well. So the zoom options, display options, voiceover, uh, hearing issues, uh, how you interact uh, with the machine, anything that's in accessibility can be there. Uh, if I am running an, uh, an XSAN server, I can configure that in here. Uh, again, this is a, a little more rare, but if you have one, you can set up how to mount it and get it set right here. Uh, there's also proxies. So any proxies that I've got uh, for web proxies, I can set in here if I'm using uh, like an FTP proxy or something like that, I can put the host name info in here. Uh, there's also a smart card uh, configuration, and this is for smart card security. So if you're using an actual smart card, you can configure the information in here for that. Uh, and then there's also system migration. So if I'm migrating from one place to another, uh, I can set the source path, the user home, the target, and the target home. Again, that's if you're migrating uh, information over from one machine to another. And then all the extensions. Uh, I can choose what allowed extensions are in here, and then to allow them all, disallow them, or disallow some extension points. Uh, kernel extensions. Again, if I'm doing things for, uh, again, this is uh, a little bit more deep uh, getting into the system uh, with terminal and all that, but I can set those up here. Uh, 
And then I've got content caching. So if I've got a caching server set up, I can set all of the information up here for where that uh, server is at, uh, what cache content I want uh, for what devices using the same public IP address or on the same local network. Uh, I can set my local network information here, one public IP address or a custom one. Uh, what the peer is, uh, so where it shares, and what the parent uh, caching uh, server is. So all of these are settings that are inside system preferences that I can do. And then I've got any other custom settings here, where maybe I've got uh, a file that I want to upload with a key type and value in here that will set up for me uh, what I want to show on the Mac. So as you can see, there are a ton of things I can do here uh, to customize my Mac uh, OS machine. And again, once I set these things, it pushes it to the machine automatically. Once I click OK, those settings are taken and they're pushed to my machines. In my case here, I'm just going to say cancel because I don't want those changes to take place. Now again, with device groups, if I come over here, uh, what's usually a good idea is just to set up a device group here for a Mac. So I'm just going to say, oh, let's just say Mac OS uh, device group. Uh, let's say devices, just like that. And so that'll be good. And uh, we'll say save so that we've got there. And we can say for members, we're going to click on plus, add devices. We'll add my Mac, we'll say done, and now my Mac is in the Mac OS devices. And so for all the Macs, if I just add them all in there and make changes once, it'll push those settings to all of my Macs. So again, it's a convenient way to manage devices. So over the last couple screencasts, that gives you an idea of how to manage by users, how to manage by devices, and how to manage by groups in each situation uh, so that you know which ones are the best way to manage those things. In a future screencast, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, TV uh, OS and how to set that up as well. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how to manage this way in Profile Manager. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.